Welcome to Design for the Creative Mind, a podcast for interior designers and creative entrepreneurs to run their business with purpose, efficiency, and passion. Because while every design is different, the process should remain the same. Prepare yourself for some good conversations with amazing guests, a dash of Jesus, and a touch of the woo-woo, and probably a swear word or two. If you're ready to stop trading your time for money and enjoy your interior design business, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Michelle Lynn. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Design for the Creative Mind. I want to introduce you to Nicole Hirsch. She is the owner and principal designer of Nicole Hirsch Interiors. Nicole, easy Hi. peasy. Hello. How are you? So good. So happy to be here. Thank you I'm for so having me on. This is oh fun. Oh, my gosh. I absolutely am looking forward to our conversation. I've been a little bit of a, um, I'd lo- I don't want to say stalker, but like a friendly stalker, just like cruising your Instagrams and the website, which by the way, freaking beautiful work. Thank you so much. We, yes. we love what we do. So it kind of makes it easy, right? Ab- yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking forward to talking to you today about processes and communication and things like that, because while well, the images always look like it's effortless, we definitely all know that that's not the case. <laughs> so <laughs> let me start with the from the beginning. And how did you get started in this business? Yeah. So it's interesting. My my background is actually in marketing. I um, went to undergrad at Tulane University in New Orleans, Louisiana. And after I graduated, I always knew I had a passion for interior design. My mom was an interior designer my whole oh, life when I was growing it's up. It's literally in your blood. In my blood. Like I, you know, but that was when, you know, when I was growing up, she would have to go to the design center to source everything because right. She couldn't source online. There was no Mm. world wide web. So, um, I kind of grew up always going to the design center, going through the racks of the fabrics and knowing how fun it was just always a passion for me. Um, but after college knew that I really needed to get a business marketing background. If I was ever planning, to, you know, start my own business one day. And so I worked for a long time for big companies in product and brand marketing, eventually knowing that I would, I would kind of launch my own firm one day. So oh, what a great strategy. Yeah. So I kind of got the business acumen. Um, as I always tell my design team, I feel like 50% of my job is design and 50% of my job is knowing how to work with clients and vendors and the kind of the business piece of it. And I think yeah. that you have to go hand in hand. I so totally agree. I was uh, having our month, our monthly, our weekly meeting with my team today. And I was just like, just give me this information because I will figure out how we need to present it in yeah. order to sell it. It's, and it is, it's sales. just mm-hmm. delivery. It's totally sales. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, we as designers, right, we know what's going to execute the best and what's going to work. But a lot of times it's it's getting our clients to be on the same page as us and mm-hmm. it's getting, you know, tradespeople to understand what we want. And so communication to me is like paramount in this business yeah. for sure. I wonder if like, so my, um, my, it's funny, my um, degree, of course, it was back in 1902, not 2002, but it was like <laughs> 1902. It's also in marketing. And I never really did anything related until this. And I was like, oh, okay, God, he knew what he was doing when I was studying that back in, you know, the Flintstones age. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there is something to, you know, when I would have to get up and do marketing presentations in front of rooms full of hundreds of people, it kind of prepared me for, I know it's on a simpler level, but being in front of clients presenting the plans for their new home. Um, And asking them for all the money. Yeah. Oh, that's not yeah. always easy. Yeah. Kind of not inexpensive these days. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know if it ever, if good design ever really has yeah. been. That's a good point. Um, so what are some things? Okay. So we're talking about, let's say clients are going into a large project. Yeah. What are some things that you wish all clients understood as you kick off the process? Yeah. Or I, maybe even when they just call you. What, yeah. When they call. Um. So I think the most important thing is that 
designing a large pro- project is is there's a process to it, right? Mm-hmm. And um, you have to go through the process to really have a successful end of the day result. And when I say the process, um, we have to first have a conversation about what your goals and expectations are for each space and roughly where your budget lies. Mm -hmm. And also that communication and understanding that Rome wasn't built in a day. And as much as you would love to have everything done in the next four months, because that's when you really want it for the big party you're having, in, in, in there is no world and no designer on this planet that that mm-hmm. can make things appear out of nowhere and and so really understanding both the timelines the expectations mm-hmm. the type of contractors that need to be brought in to really execute a project successfully and then kind of sticking with the process in terms of let's make decisions let's get orders placed let's have everything sent to a receiver so we can have an efficient install day. Right. Um, As long as the clients are on the same page with all that minutia, which sounds really unfun during, you know, it's not what the the sexy stuff. It's not the sexy part. Exactly. But those are the parts and pieces that at the end of the day create really successful projects for us with happy clients. Absolutely. Because it's already sometimes just so taxing. Even just if things are back ordered, if they were have broken or whatever, if you don't have a, a standard operating procedure, absolutely, it just it can it can take on a life of its own. We, I always say that uh, every design is different, but the process should be the same. Process should absolutely be the same, and I think certain as designers um, and every designer in every major city has their their person, but there is no one more valuable than a receiver that a receiver warehouse that you trust and and they trust you and you have this amazing working relationship Mm -hmm. because they are like our backbone they are in taking every single piece of custom furniture that we are having made for our clients and looking over it with a fine tooth comb and letting us know if something's not right and then they're there on the day of install to like help us bring a whole like years, a year of work yes. to get into fruition in one day. And um, willing to move a rug a quarter of an inch to the right because oh. it's just not centered and it's <laughs> going to make you crazy. And it, they smile. And they smile. And they're so, and they're so great. We, yeah, we really love <laughs> our receiver that we work with in Boston. And we've been through a bunch of them and finally has found the one that is just our they're close to our heart, but it's it's an important part of the process. Well, they're an extension of your business and they represent us when we show up to the project site as well. 100%. And that's the day, right, that really makes or break you all. There's always going to be twists and turns throughout the design mm-hmm. process. We order something and it's no longer available. It They can't make it, you know, and there are things right. that we need to pivot with throughout the process and clients work with us back and forth. But when it gets to that day where we're at install Mm -hmm. day, there's no more, oops, you know, it's everything's (laughs) got to be exactly perfect. But that's also why, so for the audience, I think I I tend to generally attract um, newer designers Mm -hmm. and that is the key importance. It just, here's a takeaway is use a receiver because if you have, if you have the item shipped to the receiver and they inspect it, you're not going to be on site receiving a pink velvet sofa when you ordered a purple silk one. You never want to, you never, ever, ever. And right. there's just also, you know, when things come, they're crated so heavily and I don't know how to open a crate. But, <laughs> oh, know, and like, plus all the cleanup. The cleanup and and all like, of it. It just takes, it takes the whole process to this mm-hmm. level at the end of the day where your clients, they, the day is over and they look around and they're like, they feel like it's like, pow, look what yes. happened. You know, in one there's, in one day. So they're, they're a very integral part of, of the process for us. And I think as much as clients want, when things are ready, they would like them to arrive at their doorstep. It's just not how a cohesive project, large project can work. Or small Absolutely. Project. And sometimes you can't, if a piece arrives and they don't like it, it's because they're not seeing in, in the proper context. In the, in the context, so piece, piece of furniture is never good. You have to oh my gosh. all design together all part and parcel. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. It makes such a difference. Yeah. When I first learned about what a receiver was, because I came to this industry completely like 
clueless. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I knew what yeah. I was doing, but you know, we're all learning it all the time. It was the, I was like a receiver. Oh, that's a fantastic service. Yeah. I don't have to hang the art. I don't have to do any of the, I don't have to do any of the yeah. furniture moving. No, I mean, listen, we all, and, and it's this, it's the same case for, you know, your general contractor, your architect, all the subs that you work with, we're not all experts in everything, right? And so that is so true. It's it's about having trusted partners. And I think that's, a, you know, we've kind of finally come to this point in the life cycle of our firm where we just have these trusted partners, these painters and our drapery, sh- you know, where um, workroom mm-hmm. and wallpaper hangers and all these people that like, we know that they're going to capitalize on it and they're going to, they're going to get it done for us the way that our clients would, would want it. So absolutely. It makes you sleep a lot easier as the business owner. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. it does. Mm-hmm. So you've touched on the relationships like with the trades and with the receiver and so forth. What would you say are the key relationships, and if I can be so bold, say ingredients, (laughs) between a designer and a client that makes a project ultra successful? Yeah, I think there's there's a few factors, but and I this sounds like such a generic answer, but for me, it really is communication, communication, communication. What Uh, you can't read minds? No, wait a minute, hold on. I thought that was what I thought that's what we were going to talk about today is how to read minds. Wish I could (laughs) actually really do, Um, but I think. That is one thing when my team and I are sitting down and we're reviewing, you know, where we're at with a particular project. I am a firm believer whether there is good news to share or bad news to share. Mm-hmm. I always like to be transparent. Um, I'm not doing anyone any favors by, you know, not telling them that something was executed incorrectly or that um, the dining, the custom dining table that we ordered six months ago, I just got an email saying that even though it's supposed to be delivered next week, we're still another three months out. Um, I think those are so tough. Oh, I'm dealing with one of those right now. It hurts my soul. Um, But it's really that like flow of communication where I want my clients to let me know if like they're having trepidation about some element of the design. And Mm -hmm. I want to let them know if there's something that is, is not a hundred percent going as planned. And there's always a solution, (laughs) like (laughs) not really not saving lives. We're designing homes. So girl, you took the words right out of my mouth. Like nobody's going to die on our shift. Like no. we're not in the ER. Yeah. I mean, listen, I understand when people are spending a lot of money, I understand mm-hmm. they become stressed at some point or passionate or worried, or I, I get it. It's, it's money and people work hard for their money and by no means do we take it lightly. Right. Um, but I, what, one thing I've learned rather than getting like, so worked up about something that's not going completely right, there's always at least two solutions to everything. Like there is a way to work through it and Mm -hmm. and pick it and still come up with um, kind of with a plan that will make our clients happy. So it'll get to the end result. Now, how many people do you have on your team and how do you teach them to communicate with the client or are you the main communicator? So I have two designers on my team who are both Mm -hmm. Very, very seasoned in the industry. One has an architecture background and the other has been working in the design fields for ages. Um, They're incredibly talented, meticulous type A. We keep everything like this. Um, Wait, wait, wait. So they're they're right-brained, but they're organized and meticulous? Yes. Girl, you have found some unicorns. Oh, they're the greatest. Um, Yeah, we're big fans of spreadsheets and, you know, staying extremely furniture schedules, Mm -hmm. dates, all of that. Um, And I do encourage them very, very much. Like once in a while, if they'll come to me with a question about something, I will kind of position it back. Why don't you shoot an email to XYZ client and Mm -hmm. tell them what your thoughts are and give them two options and we'll go from there. Um, I, if it's a sticky situation, I will mm-hmm. always insert myself and I will present it to a client. Right. Um, 
But for the most part, they're both such fabulous designers. They have insane design aesthetic. They know exactly what's going on at all times. Um, and their input and communication with the clients is as good as mine. I oh, That's perfect. So. Yeah. It's just the sticky ones where if your name's on the door, you kind of need to get involved. Yep. And there are, there are those situations where the client wants to hear from me. Um, and I have no problem, you know. Yeah. You, you take the good with the bad as, yeah. as the owner. Yes. And it sounds like with you, when you have the right processes, procedures and staff, yeah. thankfully the sticky doesn't come up that often. Yeah, no, it really, um, it really doesn't. And I do feel like, again, like we, we have certain vendors and, and custom upholsterers and drapery workrooms and all this that we've worked with for so many years mm-hmm. We're in, across hundreds of projects really at this point. Um, and everyone is so amicable and like in terms of wanting to help us and yeah. never say no, there's always a way that you know, people are willing to help us and go above and beyond to get, get us to where we need to be. So our clients are happy. Well, and probably because you're generally not assholes to them. We try. I really, I, I don't think we are. I really, we really do. We, we continue to work with these same people over and over and over again. And I need these relationships to be strong. And I, right. I count on these people. So for us to be angry or unkind Mm -hmm. and benefit anybody. (laughs) Well, that, yeah. And it takes so much more energy to be mean than just to be generous, gracious. Yeah. It It totally, totally is. And there are some times where we, you know, get to the point where, okay, we've been really, really kind. And we keep saying, you know, you keep saying to us, I'm figuring, we're figuring out, we're figuring out where the dining table is. I, we're going to get to the bottom of it. And and then when we get to a certain point, then we're not that nice anymore. Yeah. Cause well, you can't be a pushover <laughs> yeah. because they're going to be like, okay, this person over here barks. So I'm going to answer them. But Nicole and her team, they're so sweet. I don't need to get back to them and they take advantage of it. So yeah, you have to have your well, boundaries. We, we get unsweet for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're like unsweet tea. Yeah, we do, we I'm here in the South. We, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, we do. We, um, at the end of the day, I want my clients to be happy and they're my priority. And yeah. and you're the clients of whoever you yeah. hired to fulfill that as well. So it is a, yeah. it is there, a listen, there are always extenuating circumstances that come up, but it's mm-hmm. even in extenuating circumstances, there's always a way to make it right. And we like to work with the vendors that will figure out a way to make it right quickly. I think that's really good information for the listeners mm-hmm. is that sometimes we take a back seat. And it's important for us to push because we are the advocates for our clients. It's our job to be good stewards of their money. It's our job to be the advocate in sticky situations because that's what they pay us for is to be that middleman Mm -hmm. and protect them from all the shizzle that goes on behind the scenes. Absolutely. And I do, and you know, for the most part, I think we, when we are first engaging with clients who have come to us about jobs like we get a pretty good sense about their kind of their their personality. We try and kind of match ourselves with clients who we know are going to be great partners with mm-hmm. us. And so for the most part, like the clients that we work with are like incredibly patient and kind and so kind to my team and grateful for all the work we do, even though they're paying us for it. And right. it's like, you don't want them to be bummed or upset or you want them to be feel like these guys are really kicking butt for me, you know, that's how we want them to feel. So whatever we can do to create that is important. What are some of the um, non-negotiable steps in this process that really kind of have to be in place in order to make the project work smoothly? Let's, let's focus on that Mm -hmm. because any project you can get through and it can just be a nightmare and you get to the end, but what are some of your non-negotiable steps? Yeah. I mean, so the design process for us, and this is kind of, I'm talking to you like you're a new client that we're, Mm -hmm. you know, that we're just getting rolling. And, you know, after we kind of get a really strong understanding of hearing from them, here's the scope of the project, Mm -hmm. you know, we already have a builder lined up, which is great. Sometimes clients have their own builder or architect already. Sometimes we recommend. Um, But once all that is kind of through and we understand the scope of the project, for us, we have to start with a really um, thorough design presentation out of the gate because 
clients hire us because a lot of times they really don't have a design vision. They don't have, they're not right. coming to us because they know exactly what they want everything to look like. And so the first part of the process for us always has to be based on each space that we're going to be building, renovating, designing for you. We're going to show you a really thorough presentation of what some of those design elements might look like, whether it's from a furnishing standpoint, from a, a millwork standpoint, um, we need to have that initial kumbaya where we really hone in on what the overall design aesthetic of each room is mm -hmm. uh, before we can move forward. The so kind of like a pre-designed design, like a mood board presentation. Exactly. It just kind of sets yeah. the stage. So we make sure like we know, um, you know, making this up, but we know that you want all neutral textures, rich wood finishes, mm -hmm. metal details. We're going to show you, and we're just going to make sure that you're visually on the same page with us. So we don't go down off this crazy tangent that you're- And have to redo it. And have to redo it. We like to, we yeah. like to have really these benchmarks to make sure we're constantly on the same page. Right. Um, that's really important. And then the next step, and this is like our big thing at Nicole Rich Interiors, is we are all about scale for any room, for any project, for any mm -hmm. anything. You may find a, the most amazing sectional or coffee table or whatever it is that you have ever seen. But if the scale is not right for the space, it's never going to look well, ever. So Amen. we are really big on either getting you know, CAD drawings, if they're, if they exist already in terms of the actual footprint of the room or going in and take measuring measurements ourselves, but we don't do anything until every floor plan is looked at to scale appropriately with each piece of furniture. Um, and then we can source gorgeous things. And most of what we do is custom furniture anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so having those floor plans in place is like, and approved by our clients is very important. Oh, okay. So that's that's interesting. So basically what you're saying is they've signed the contract. You're going to go ahead and do a pre-design concept presentation, and then you map out the floor plan and then kind of back the furniture into that. So instead of So instead of saying, oh, I like this, and then finding out that it's not right, but you already built the room around it, it's like, I need this size coffee table. It needs to be five by five square. Yep. And, because, and then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause a lot of times really at the end of the day, again, we have these millwork partners that we've worked so closely with. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day for us, it almost really saves a lot of time and money. We end up just having things custom built because our clients see a coffee table. That they absolutely love the scale is not right. And we just have it built for them. That makes sense. Yeah. And it's one off. Yeah. Nobody else has it. Nobody it's else has it. We are able to approve the most perfect stain finish, paint mm -hmm. finish, whatever the case may be. It's a combination sometimes. Um, but we feel like getting everything to scale and then creating the pieces in that perfect scale is paramount. That also goes back to the sales process of it. It's like that. Yes, that is the perfect table in style, but the scale isn't right, but here's the solution. Yeah, exactly. Let's make one just for you and we can make it darker, lighter, purple, blue, whatever. Yeah. And, and I think there's this stigma when I say to clients who have never worked with a designer before, well, we're going to just make the sofa custom. They're like, that's going to be triple the price of what I could get at RH or, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, somewhere. And, and it really isn't the case anymore at all. Uh, isn't but that crazy? It, it really isn't. Aside from the, the fact that you have to obviously purchase CO, you know, you have to mm -hmm. purchase the materials separately. There really is not at all a vast difference between some of these, you know, big um, box stores. Yeah. Like and the expensive. quality is better. Quality is better. And we always try and work with local showrooms. So if a year from now there's an issue, they can pop back and fix it. Or like mm -hmm. the other day, we a client got her beautiful, gorgeous new sectional and went to like kind of sit back and she's like, I feel like I want like a little more support in the back cushions. Mm -hmm. And so the company is 30 minutes away. They came, they picked up the back cushions, they 
put put in, you know, a firmer fill. Mm-hmm. They do what they do. And if, you don't have to figure it out. You just give them a call and say, this is what she's looking for. That's and awesome. And they're so happy to to do that. So yeah. So custom pieces and floor planning is also like a, the, the floor planning piece is non-negotiable. That makes perfect sense. I like that. I, we do that for some of our projects. But in, and again, we're in Texas. So the scale of our rooms are different, I would imagine, than in Boston um, for the for some of the houses. Yeah. And it does, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. You have to no, back it, into that. It, it really does. It just makes the whole process clearer. We're, I mean, even for when we're doing outdoor furniture too, we're doing oh, projects yes. right now where mm-hmm. we're not only figuring out the layout of the furniture outside, but also um, we are designing a custom like fire pit table. And so we need to kind of make sure that that nice long length of the fire pit pairs perfectly with the sofa. So right. we do and nobody have- gets their knees burned. Nobody gets their knees burned. And- <laughs> Little details there. Looks Maybe they do great. end up in the operating room on our shift. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you don't have the dimensions proper <laughs> on your fire table and your furniture. Oh. Um, so Nicole, what is the favorite part of the work that you do? There's so, so many favorite parts. I, um, I would say presentation days are Mm -hmm. just the greatest. Like when we've kind of worked and figured out these pieces that we just know, we get to know our clients so well, and we know Mm -hmm. that we're going to fall in love with them. And that day where we like finally come into our office and we have all the boards up on the screen and, you know, we we're going room by room and they're looking at all the pieces. And then we have flat lays of all the fabrics and the metal finishes Mm -hmm. and the wood and this, and they like kind of walk in and are just awestruck and are like, it's like, a kid in a candy store, like mm-hmm. that couch and that fabric with this drapery and this wallpaper. And there's like a, there's just such an excitement to that. Absolutely. Thing. The giddiness of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's definitely um, our favorite. Oh, that's fun. And on the flip side, what would you say is the most difficult aspect of your job? The most difficult aspect of my job are those few months leading up to install day where the Mm -hmm. date is approaching and we are constantly, we have, we keep a very detailed furniture schedule for every project. So there is placed, right. It's by room. It's each piece with all the details of that piece, the date, Mm -hmm. the order was placed, the lead time and all of that. And having to chase those pieces of furniture Oh yes, as the install date is approaching and we keep hounding them we need this. We're, we're here. We're four months out. We're five months out now Mm -hmm. when it's being shipped. I need this for install date. Those are the days that give me acid reflux. (laughs) Now, do you do all of that in-house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you have an admin who does that or is that one of your designers? One of our designers like to stay on top of their project. Uh, They, um, kind of know the minutia behind it and they have, you know, contacts with whom they ordered through. And so we, um, every kind of in the weeks leading up to installs, we are Mm -hmm. very much on top of that. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That can go sideways quickly if you're not paying attention. And, and, you know, those are the things where it's like, we, we try and order things in, plenty of time to never have something not there for install day, but it does happen sometimes. And we are grateful when our clients are a little understanding and realize it's only going to be another two or three weeks and the receiver will bring it and place it. And it's not going to be a big deal, but right. um, it it's not the way I like to th- see things go yeah. down. I totally understand that. It's like, I want it and I want it now. But again, it's not Amazon where you can just place an order and have it show up a few days later. Oh, and then there's, you know, not everything we're making is in Massachusetts, right? So it's mm-hmm. got to gotta account for shipping time and all that. Do you have a good uh, design resource in Massachusetts, in Boston area? Is there design, a design center? Oh, design center. Yes. So mm-hmm. we have a Boston design center, um, which has like a lot of our go-tos in terms of 
we do a lot of, you know, carpets from Stark and we um, do a lot of fabrics from Romo and Designers Guild. We have all those like mm -hmm. core. Basics. Kind of I don't want to say basic, yeah. that they're basic, but they are core. There are core people, Philip Jeffries, that we go back to over and over and time and time again. Um, and then, you know, we also, though, for the most part, like we have our specialty people like we work with. I don't know if you've heard of Art and Loom out of Miami. They do the most exquisite, like art for the floor, custom rugs. Oh, um, how fun. They're phenomenal. And so we do a lot of rugs with them, but we've mm -hmm. worked with them for so long. We know we've got it down with them. Yeah. Um, and, and then we, we really purchase from everywhere there. The, the uh, South end of Boston has a lot of cool showrooms, Casa design and where they import a lot from Italy and, um, M2L and we do a lot of really modern pieces. Mm -hmm. So um, we kind of have our showrooms that are a bit more modern. Which is also what gives you the look that you have for your firm. Yeah. It's a combination. It's not just going to be cookie cutter. Yeah. And so we um, are a little bit different in that New England, you would think of, right? Most people are very traditional in terms of their homes. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where our firm has set ourselves apart. Um, we are lean much more to the transitional to contemporary to modern. And mm -hmm. now with um, all these new, more modern high rises going up in Boston and younger oh. families moving out to the, to me the Metro West suburbs of Boston, we have become kind of sought after because we provide a more contemporary aesthetic that a lot of designers in the area don't specialize in. That's perfect. And yeah. it's nice that you have your little niche there. Yeah. Boy, Nicole, we could sit and chat. I love just talking about like how other designers are are finding their way and um, sharing the success and the ideas there as well. So I hope that our audience has got some good takeaways. But yeah. I want to ask you a couple more questions. Like, yeah. when do you think about your business strategy when? as the CEO? Like, oh, when? When do, do I think? When mm -hmm. do I think about it? Whenever I have a spare sec, three in the morning, four in the morning. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I get um, that. Yeah, you know, I always try and take stock of kind of our strategy a couple mm -hmm. times a year. Sometimes, honestly, I find myself so in the throes of day to day, like mm -hmm. getting things done for projects. We have so many large projects right now, like seven story townhouse in Beacon Hill. And massive new construction homes in the suburbs. So like our projects are very all in the same space now. That sounds amazing. So it's a good problem to have. And yeah. it sounds like your projects are Texas sized. They are. We The homes out here are um, in the suburbs west of Boston. Mm -hmm. the homes are, are large. They're expansive here. So we're, we are doing- That's fabulous. Yeah. Most of the homes are- that we're doing now, 10,000 square feet, 12,000 square They're They're, you know, they're large. Yeah, love that. But that being said, to answer your question, mm -hmm. um, I do try and kind of take stock and, and evaluate in terms of where we are now versus where we are heading. And I think as our company has evolved, it used to be like, you want to hire us to do two really beautiful rooms in your house. That was like super exciting when we were first getting going. And I think our expectations for the type of project we take now are much greater. Um, right. And I, and I think that that's kind of been a real shift in terms of, you know, how I'm running our firm. No, I and think that makes sense. And it's, it's, it's easier. Let's just do the whole damn thing instead of piecing it together. Yeah. And I think now I think um, we've kind of hit a point where we don't even get the requests anymore for mm -hmm. smaller jobs, which is which is great because when we come in now, we have such fine tuned our expertise in home building, renovation, all of that, that it's very hard for us to come in and just like do interior design in a house with furniture right. and paint wallpaper um, mm -hmm. because people always walk in and want to affect the millwork in some capacity or if it's dated and, and right. all of that. 
So I think that that's kind of been, um, for the past year or so, we've been on just a different trajectory in terms of the type of, of work we're taking. I love that. And I think that once you start getting that momentum, it attracts more. A hundred percent. Like our, mm-hmm. you know, we, we are looking for projects that will build our portfolio. We, um, you know, from a press standpoint, we like projects that we can really photo shoot yes. and, and show up in the press in a meaningful way and, and be in, you know, big spreads in modern luxury interiors and, you know, I saw a lot of that on your website. Do you find that that brings you business or is it just, let me ask you. So from a, a press standpoint, because I know a lot of our audience are, are, are aiming for that. Is it, how does it, what am I trying to ask? How does it, does it bring you business or does it just um, co- uh, like solidify the business? Like, oh, and by the way, here we are. Or do they call you from those publications. Okay, good. Can you expand on that just a bit? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. So I didn't know the answer to this question when I, um, when I started working with our PR firm, who I absolutely love. And I think it's when you get to a point in your business where you have enough really juicy Mm -hmm. projects that Mm -hmm. you have photographed with a I I've worked with the same photographer since day one and the same photo stylist. I think having that's that awesome. Very important. Um, but once you get to the point where you have enough of these really substantial projects, I think having someone help you with press is incredibly, incredibly important. Um, because it, it elevates your brand even mm-hmm. more. Um, and so there are a lot of times like we've been in lately in the New York times and the Seattle times, AD, all these magazines. And I sure do like get calls from people just saw your project in XYZ publication. Would love to speak to you. I get calls from builders when they see our stuff in trade publications. So that's awesome. That's uh, a great. Yeah. And it's strategy, you know, if you're if your projects are good enough to be in some of these publications, it also warrants the hourly rate that you charge a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, It just kind of in all respects, helps you elevate your business and people understand what you're worthy of. I love that. I think that's a good, and and you can own it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, that makes sense. So what would you be doing now if you were not in the design industry? That's such a good, if I were not in the design industry, I always, when I was little, I always thought that I wanted to be in broadcast journalism. Mm -hmm. I, I love, I, when I remember when I was in high school, I interned for a while at a local news station. And I just thought I love sharing news with people. I don't, I just thought, I thought (laughs) we such like a, a really super cool profession. I would really have to dial back in time because I feel mm-hmm. like, it, but I I just always thought the idea of broadcast journalism in some capacity would have been a really cool career. That I understand that. I wanted to be a journal, a written journalist. Yeah. Like no but broadcasting I, for me, but I wanted to write all about what was going on. But I feel like you host this mm-hmm. very amazing podcast and you kind of oh, there like, we go. you like, you know, put together your, your, various interests. That's interesting. Yeah, for sure. And uh, the listeners have heard this. I came into the podcast kicking and screaming. I really did not want to do this, but I would not trade it for anything because I have so much fun just meeting new people and learning things selfishly. I get to learn things. I I do. I, I really, I'm one of those people who's been a little later to start listening to podcasts and I Mm -hmm. why, but I, I like so informative and I just feel like when I'm walking, listening to a podcast, mm-hmm. it, it's actually more so much more inspiring than listening to music for me. No, I totally understand, especially when you're you're passionate about whatever you're listening to, whether it's design or it could be you know about gardening or whatever. Yeah, float your boat. Yeah. I, it's true. Yeah. It's a whole different perspective. Okay, okay. so last question. Yep. I think is uh, is there any piece of wisdom or advice that you would want to leave with the listeners? Our audience. Um, I would, I would say, never let kind of the the 
bad days of business deter you from moving forward because what feels, Mm -hmm. you know, there can be really bad days in this industry. Yeah. Um, where you just are like, how how did five bad things just happen all in one day? Mm -hmm. None of them are that monumental and they're all going to pass and they're all going to resolve themselves. Um, whether you're the client or a designer or whoever you are, I just think there, everything is like you can you can tackle any problem and get through it and you've learned so much from that process it makes you a better designer so just don't let the bad days get you down i love that it's so true and i think is it marie forleo she says everything is figure outable yeah yeah everything is figure outable it, and it, yeah it's it's absolutely so true and and you know the first you know the first steps can be hard and, mm-hmm. but every day of this job is a learning process. So I know. Still. Again, <laughs> it is ever, I don't think there ever won't be, you know, the more you challenge yourself with harder and bigger and more substantial projects. Mm-hmm. And that's the case is that you have to lift more weight to get stronger. Yeah. That's a great, actually, that's a, a great mm-hmm. phrase. I love that. And I think that that's been my biggest kind of lesson is, is on the really, really bad days, I'm actually learning so much more than I am on the, on the smooth sailing days. Yes. And as long as they're peppered, yeah, <laughs> like interspersed a little bit, so it's not like back to back. <laughs> one kind of yucky day. And then yeah. like two months of really great days. And, <laughs> exactly. You know, can, can we, the, can we schedule that please? <laughs> that's the ratio. That's the ratio. Oh, no, Nicole, I know that the audience has loved everything you've shared. And I think it's so relatable, but it's also aspirational. How can the audience connect with you? Where can they find you? They Oh, that's easy. You can find me <laughs> many places. Um, you can always find me through my, my Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. We are very active on our Instagram page and also very responsive to DMs. Mm-hmm. Um, when reaching out for potential projects, always best to email through our website. There's an email address that comes directly into my inbox. I never miss them and I never don't respond to them. Um, and so it's it's easy either way to to connect with our team. Rock on. And the website is Nicole Hirsch Interiors yeah. dot com. Yeah, and I- what is your handle for Instagram? It's just Nicole.Hirsch.Interiors. Perfect. 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 Yeah. I will make sure that those details are listed in the show notes for our audience to reference. And I want to leave the audience with a quick little, I'm going to say commercial, because I'm going to invite you to all to the Interior Design Business Success Summit. It is April 2nd through the 5th of 2024. So depending on when you're listening to this, it may be applicable. It might not. We're holding it at at Dallas Market Center. And we have our, y'all should just see the venue we uh, we confirmed at Dallas Market Center. We're going to be on the 15th floor with this badass view. We have some amazing speakers coming through. The theme for the Interior Design Business Success Summit this year, this is our fourth year, it is Whipping Up Success in uncertain markets. And all of our speakers are going to be taking their specialty and addressing it towards whipping up success in uncertain markets. So we've got whipping, we've got um, ingredients. Uh, It all falls in line with the Interior Design Business Bakery, which is our paid program. So I'm inviting y'all, if you want more details there, go to designforthecreativemind.com and click on the summit button and you'll get all of the details and information there. And if you have any other questions, you can also DM me on Instagram, the word summit. So there's my little commercial. Thank you guys for listening. Nicole, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. This was so lovely. You are wonderful to speak with. I really enjoyed it. Oh, it's mutual. So y'all, we will talk to you soon. And also, please don't forget to drop us a review wherever you catch your favorite podcasts. It really does help. So thanks for being here. Love you. Mean it. Bye. Hey, y'all. If you love the show and find it useful, I would really appreciate it if you would share with your friends and followers. And if you like what you're hearing, want to put a face with a name and get even more business advice, then join me in my Facebook group, the Interior Designers Business Launchpad. 
Yeah, I know, it's Facebook. But just come on in for the training and then leave without scrolling your feed. It's fun, I promise you'll enjoy it. And finally, I hear it's good for business to get ratings on your podcasts. So please drop yours on whatever platform you use to listen to this. We're all about community over competition. So let's work on elevating our industry one designer at a time. See you next time. Thank you.